Why does exophthalmos occur in Graves' disease? This question can be answered by understanding exophthalmos, Graves' disease, and then knowing the link between the two. The term exophthalmos is derived from two word parts, exo meaning out, ophthalmos meaning eye, that are combined to form exophthalmos meaning protrusion of the eyeballs. Here you can see the picture of a person with exophthalmos. You can see how the eyeballs are protruded and also you can notice that the upper eyelids are retracted. The eyeballs are so protruded out that the upper eyelids get retracted upwards. When you compare this with the picture of a person without exophthalmos, like here, you can notice the normal appearance of the eyeballs. They are not protruded and also the upper eyelid is covering a little of the upper eyeball. Whereas in a person with exophthalmos, the upper eyelid is retracted exposing almost whole of the eyeball in the front. Gray's disease is an autoimmune condition that causes hyperthyroidism. The thyroid gland produces the hormones T3 and T4. In hyperthyroidism, as the name implies, there is hyper or increase in the production of the thyroid hormones. These are the steps that regulate the secretion of thyroid hormones from the thyroid gland. First, the TRH or the thyrotropin releasing hormone from the hypothalamus stimulates the anterior pituitary to secrete TSH or the thyroid stimulating hormone. This then stimulates the thyroid gland to secrete thyroid hormones T3 and T4. The production of these hormones is in turn controlled by a negative feedback mechanism. That is, when the thyroid hormone levels reach an adequate level, then the thyroid hormones signal the anterior pituitary to inhibit further secretion of TSH and also it signals the hypothalamus to inhibit further secretion of TRH. But if the hormone levels are low, then this inhibition doesn't occur so the TRH is free to stimulate the anterior pituitary to secrete TSH, which in turn stimulates the thyroid gland to secrete thyroid hormones. And then when an adequate level is reached, they in turn send negative feedback signals to inhibit further production of the thyroid hormones. This is what happens when there is normal regulation of thyroid hormone secretion. We learned before that Graves' disease is an autoimmune condition that causes hyperthyroidism. An autoimmune condition is a disease caused by antibodies that are produced against substances which are normally naturally present inside the body. In hyperthyroidism due to Graves' disease, antibodies called thyroid stimulating immunoglobulins are produced against the TSH receptor in the thyroid gland. Normally, the TSH produced in the anterior pituitary binds to the TSH receptor in the thyroid gland and then stimulates the production of thyroid hormones T3 and T4. In Graves' disease, the thyroid stimulating immunoglobulins 
or TSIs act like TSH and stimulate the thyroid gland to produce more thyroid hormones. Because these TSIs are not TSH, the negative feedback inhibition of thyroid hormones will only inhibit TSH but will not inhibit this TSIs because they are not TSH. So the negative feedback mechanism is ineffective against this. And these TSIs will continually stimulate the thyroid gland to produce more thyroid hormones. Also, these TSIs act for a longer duration than the normal TSH, leading to more increase in the thyroid hormone levels. The TSH receptors are present not only in the thyroid gland, but also in a few other tissues like the fibroblasts of the eye. As you learned before, the thyroid stimulating immunoglobulins act for a longer duration than the normal TSH and are also not inhibited by the negative feedback mechanism. So as they act for a longer duration, they exert their effects on many other tissues that have the TSH receptors, including the fibroblasts of the eye. The thyroid stimulating immunoglobulins act on the TSH receptors present in the preadipocyte fibroblasts of the eye, which are in the retroorbital tissues of the eye. And the fibroblasts, when stimulated by the TSIs, release cytokines that promote inflammation and edema. These cytokines stimulate the synthesis and secretion of glycosaminoglycans by the fibroblasts. The glycosaminoglycans have a property of attracting water. So, when the glycosaminoglycans are produced by the fibroblasts, they tend to increase the water absorption of the fibroblasts, leading to edema. That in turn is evident as edematous swelling of the retroorbital tissues. And this edematous swelling of the retroorbital tissues protrudes the eyeballs. Retroorbital means behind the eyeball. So the tissues behind the eyeball are swollen, pushing the eyeball in front, leading to the protruded appearance of the eyeballs. That is known as exophthalmus or protrusion of the eyeball. Thanks for watching this video. If you found this video helpful, please click the like, leave your feedback in the comments below, share it with your friends and kindly subscribe to support the channel and get updates whenever I post a new video. Until next time, happy learning!